So, COVID-19, the coronavirus, it is everywhere in the news, and to be honest, I had been hesitating to make a video like this because I must stress this very, very strongly. I am not a working scientist. I don't have a PhD. I'm not an expert in this field, but given the platform that I have and that I am a public science communicator, I feel almost morally obligated to try to get some good information about the coronavirus, COVID-19 out there if I can using my platform. So uh, things are evolving very quickly in this situation, especially in the United States. So if you are viewing this video very far from when it was published, I suggest you go back to the CDC website or check your local news to see how things have changed since then. But I've been following this pretty closely and I will give you the best, most basic knowledge to fight misinformation at the time I'm filming this video. So let's start with the very basics. The coronavirus that we are dealing with right now is a novel coronavirus, meaning we have not seen this pathogen before. However, we have seen many coronaviruses before. There are a few that circulate every single year. I think four of them are also associated with causing the common cold. So we are familiar with coronaviruses. There have even been experts warning us since 2003 that a coronavirus pandemic was probably on the horizon. But this is a new pathogen, which is why it has everyone so freaked out. What we know right now about COVID-19, which is the disease caused by the coronavirus, the novel coronavirus, is that it originated in China, probably within one of the wild animal markets in pangolins, might have a reservoir in bats. We're pretty confident in that. Bats are actually a reservoir for many different diseases, infectious diseases. And once it was in contact with people for enough time, there was a spillover event. So the virus mutated enough to jump into humans and then have a viable pathway to other humans. I hear a lot of people saying that this is no worse than the flu, so what should we have to worry about? Now, while it's true that this is similar to the flu and there are flu-like symptoms, COVID-19 is nothing to be trifled with, and it is not just like the flu. Right now, numbers that we have, especially case numbers out of South Korea, where they're doing a lot of testing and checking the mortality rates versus the case rates, it shows that this COVID-19 is around five to six times more lethal than the flu. Uh, this is not something you can just ride out. This novel coronavirus is also about as infectious as the flu. When you hear experts talking about it, they'll refer to the so-called r naught value. This r naught value is a measure of the infectivity, the infectiousness of a certain pathogen. For reference, COVID-19, the coronavirus, and the flu are around two-ish for R0. That means that for every one case, that person will likely go on to infect at least two other people on average. To put that in context, something like measles has an R0 of 15. So this is a disease that is mildly infectious, just like the flu, but nowhere near something like measles. So it's not spreading nearly as rapidly. What we know about this novel coronavirus transfer is that it is a droplet transfer, mostly from coughs and sneezes landing on surfaces, then people touching those surfaces and then touching their face or touching others, spreading this pathogen. It is not an airborne pathogen such that it is just hanging in the air for a long amount of time. Uh, with measles, you could get into an elevator with someone who had measles, but they were in the elevator an hour ago and you could still get measles. This is not the case with COVID-19. It is more touching droplets on surfaces from sneezes and coughs. That being said, the lifetime for a coronavirus, this novel coronavirus on a surface is not minutes like you may have heard in the news. It is days and possibly up to a week. So 24, 48 hours or longer, that's how long it can stay on surfaces. That is so important to know because this is why we are disinfecting surfaces. In a normal office environment, a pathogen can be spread, if it's just surface touching, to the entire office, like 100% of the surfaces in the office, in under two hours. So this is why knowing how it is spread is so important. You don't want to be touching everything and then touching your face. Going along with the meme that COVID-19 is just like the flu, which it isn't, a lot of people are referencing the 80% of cases are mild figure, and that is true. However, 
When you are talking about millions and millions of people potentially being infected by the same pathogen, even small percentages of lethal cases or very dangerous cases add up to hundreds of thousands of people, perhaps millions. Another meme that you'll hear a lot, in fact, I heard it today in a meeting, is that, oh, it doesn't matter if kids get it. Kids are basically immune, so we might not have to close the schools and it'll just blow through them and it'll be totally fine. Now, while it is true that the mortality rate for children and young adults is much lower, it is much higher for everyone else. If you are under the age of 50, this mortality rate might be between uh, 0.5 and 1%, much lower, mind you, than the 3% you will hear uh, usually talked about in the media based on the actual cases and mortality rates we know from places like South Korea. If you get over 50, it gets higher, uh, 1 to 2% mortality rate. And then if you're over 80, that jumps up to 20%. This is important to know because if you think that kids can't get it and they're totally fine and you don't take any precautions, you might have your son or daughter... Um, in contact with someone, get the coronavirus, they don't show any symptoms, but then they go and uh, hug grandma or get a present from grandpa. And once they pass that along to them, it is a much more serious situation. And this last basic figure I want to hit you with is gonna sound scary, but it's important to know. Uh, based on researchers from Johns Hopkins and the CDC, everything that I've been hearing from experts in the field, 25 to 75% of the population is likely to come into contact with novel coronavirus. It's not going to affect everyone. It's not going to decimate the population. It's not gonna kill everybody. But when you're talking about 25 to 75% of, let's say 340 million people in the United States, you're talking about potential fatalities in the range of 500,000 to a million. So this is a lot more serious than I think a lot of people are taking it, but there's something that we can do about that. You may have heard of flattening the curve, as you see in the diagram behind me. This is an epidemiological concept in response to pandemics, something that we want to do. So what is flattening the curve? Well, we have a graph of cases over time, how long the virus has been spreading. If you have a very high peak, a very pointy curve. That means you have a lot of cases in a short amount of time. If you flatten that curve, that means you have the same number of cases, not less cases, the same number of cases, but those cases are spread out over a longer period of time. You could ask the very valid question, okay, well, why do we want to flatten the curve? Well, time is the very important variable here. When you have such a peak, such a pointy curve, this is a pulse, a very strong shock to the system, the healthcare systems, the economy, our supply chains. Right now, I just came from the supermarket and it's the fourth supermarket that I checked with no toilet paper, with no rice, with no canned meat, with very few uh, non-perishable food items. When you have a very pointy curve, it puts a shock to the system, especially the healthcare system. When you have so many people coming into hospitals wanting to be tested, um, so many people asking for gas masks, looking for toilet paper, looking for surgical gloves, it puts a huge demand on our healthcare system, on our doctors and our nurses, on our medical supplies. It removes supplies from people who might actually need it, like respirators. So we want to flatten this curve to make the average number of cases cases per day much smaller so we're not shocking the system quite as much. There's a more practical reason to flatten the curve too beyond just buying toilet paper. The earliest we are likely to see a vaccine for coronavirus, this new one, and see any antivirals that can help deal with it is probably 12 to 18 months from now. Now think about that. If you have all of these shocks to the system very, very quickly when it is a long time from getting a vaccine, there's gonna be a lot of people sick without resources to handle it. But if we flatten the curve, make it so that more people are getting sick closer to when there's a potential vaccine, it makes it so that you're more likely to get sick later and closer to when we actually have something to help you. By flattening the curve, we reduce supply shortages. We increase the average number of beds in our hospitals and just we give some doctors and nurses some time to rest. That's very important. So what can you do in the face of this pandemic? Well, 
Very simply, you want to take some common sense precautions as you're likely probably already doing. You want to limit contact with surfaces that aren't under your control in some way. You want to be washing your hands frequently and using hand sanitizer. Alcohol-based hand sanitizer doesn't work for every kind of pathogen, but it does work for COVID-19 because it is surrounded by a lipid layer on the outside of this virus that can be inactivated by alcohol and by these hand washing techniques. So you want to be doing that very frequently and not touching your face to spread the disease from your hands to where it can get into your body, your eyes, your nose, your mouth. But the other big thing that I think you should be doing right now, just from a moral and epidemiological standpoint, is called social distancing. Now is the time to stop hugging people, to stop giving handshakes, to stop going to meetings. You should probably cancel your plans. You should probably cancel your trip uh, across the country or across the world. Now is the time to increase the distance between each other to isolate ourselves. And I know that sounds extreme and a lot of countries are using extreme measures in this regard. However, you can think about it. It makes perfect sense. If you remove yourself from contact or you try to remove yourself as much as possible from contact with other human beings, you are taking yourself out of the viral chain. Remember those two people people that are on average infected by one person that are not value for COVID-19? Well, if it doesn't have two people to go into, you are now removed from that chain and you are not going to infect anyone else. By social distancing, by removing yourself from the viral chain, you can help flatten this curve. I know it may sound rude and it may sound very austere, but you might want to think about not traveling, pulling your kids out of school, never handshaking anyone, <laughs> not hugging anyone anymore. And this is just because without people to infect, this virus can't spread. And actions like not traveling and removing your kids from school have been shown to reduce the time before there's the peak number of cases. It helps flatten the curve. And in 1918, data showed that removing children from schools actually helped reduce overall mortality rate in certain cities. I will be practicing this myself. Here at the facility, we are basically locking down and we are not going out, we are not going to meetings, we are not shaking people's hands, we are not meeting with other faculty members. And that's because I wanna be a part of flattening this curve. I know that I'm in a very privileged position. I can make these videos from the facility and I don't have to go out and interact with people. I know that's not the case for many of you. Many of you need to interact with people or need to go to an office to keep your job and to get the money that you need to go and try to find toilet paper, dang it. So what I would say to people who still have to interact and cannot social distance as much as perhaps they might want to, I'd say that do your best. In every case, try to make yourself as safe as possible through washing your hands, through not shaking hands, through not hugging, through isolating yourself maybe in your office as much as possible and just stay safe. Again, if you are watching this video further from the time that it was posted, please go and check the CDC, go check your local news outlets to see how information has changed, but I just want you to be safe out there. I may not be right on all of these points. Again, I'm not an expert, but in my position, I feel like I needed to get some good information out there. So like I said, it's very likely that in the next year, next 18 months, many of us, if not the majority, will encounter COVID-19. But but if we do our best to flatten the curve, we increase our chances that we'll have some good way to deal with it by the time you actually get sick. So stay safe out there. Stay healthy.